Welcome. Welcome, Heritage family and friends. I'm so glad you're joining us tonight. Um, tonight is corporate prayer, so I am so excited. Let me pray, and we'll get started. Let me pray before we start praying. <laughs> oh, Father, we love you so much. We honor you, Lord. We glorify your name. Oh, Father, we've come together to lift your name up and to honor you, Father. I pray for tonight's service, Lord. We submit to you, Holy Spirit, that you just take over tonight. That we would pray your prayers. That we would say your words, Father. Yes, Lord, that it would go through these cameras, Father, into people's homes, into their hands and into their hearts, Father. I thank you, Lord, for revelation knowledge tonight, Lord, in your name. Amen. Hallelujah. You know what? Praying is powerful. Amen. It is one of the most powerful. It is the most powerful thing you can do. And if you can pray, then you have a weapon against your enemy. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm going to just do a little bit of teaching before we start into our corporate prayer, but Philippians 1.19, it says, Paul was talking and he says, for I know that this will turn to my salvation or my deliverance or my rescue or my help through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ. So Paul was saying, you know what, whatever I'm going through right now, it's going to turn. Yeah. It is going to turn yeah. because of your prayer. Yeah. So that tells me how powerful our prayers are. Yeah. In Ephesians 6:18, it says to pray at all times, yeah. all the time. If you Ever, always. And I love, um, if you listen to this Sunday's message, Dr. Savelle was talking about how this is the perfect time to be in the Word of God. I think we pretty much need to just flip everything around. The time that we used to spend in, in prayer, whatever it was, 5, 15, 30 minutes, and now the time that, that, and the time that you used to spend watching television, that all needs to flip. The time that you spend watching television needs to be the time we need to be praying. And the time that we used to spend praying when we were going to work every day, that's when we should be watching television. For the, yes. Amen. Because I'm telling you, our prayers are effective. I know the tide is turning. I know things are turning because yeah. God's people yeah. are praying. Yeah. They're praying with the effectiveness of the word of God because that's what we're called to do. We're called to pray the word of God. Yes. So I want to just quickly go over Galatians 2.20. This is a prayer of consecration. If you've got your Bible, you can open it. And it says, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. Amen? It's Christ that lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So this prayer is a prayer of consecration. We are giving ourselves to God in complete and voluntary surrender. We are saying unto you, O Lord, do I bring my life. I bring myself, Father. I want to be a constant voice in the heavenly realm declaring your word. Because God has called us to establish his word on this earth when we speak it. So we need to be speaking it. We speak God's word. That's, those are prayers going yeah. forth. When the word says that his word will not return void, it's got to go out first. We've got to speak it. Now, I'm gonna, we're going to be asking you to pray in tongues also. And 1 Corinthians 14, 2 says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. And it is taking those divine secrets in the spirit. When a spirit-filled believer talks in tongues or speaks in tongues, they're praying out the heart of God. Yes. It is not something that we pray out of here. It's something that we pray out of here. Amen. Hallelujah. I've got all these places marked. Yeah, hallelujah. While she's, while she's going there, yeah, Romans 8, 26, right? It's the Spirit of the Lord that helps us, tells yes. us how to pray. Amen. Amen. When we don't know how we ought to, because there's some days where we, we're like, I don't even know what to pray, God, so I just start praying in the Holy Spirit. Helps us to be qualified to speak. Amen. That's it. Amen. I, don't, I, I get my mind disengaged, and I get my spirit in on it. Now, there are some obstacles to prayer meetings, because some of y'all may be new to corporate prayer, and these are some things that will hinder um, people who come in late to prayer meetings. Those will hinder prayer meetings. Um, much singing is one of them. Prayer meetings that are too long or prayers that are too long. 
Because we, whenever someone is praying, we need to be in union. When one is praying, the others aren't, aren't to be praying along. They're to be in agreement. Their thoughts, don't let your thoughts wander off to, I wonder, you know, what's for dinner or what's for lunch or whatever. You're, you're in agreement. You're listening to, to whatever they're praying. If they're praying in English, you're, you're in agreement. You're saying, yes, amen, I agree, yes, hallelujah, yes. And you're, you're listening. That, that is what we're doing. We're working together as one. Um, and also if they're praying, if there's only one person praying in the Holy Ghost, then listening to those beautiful words, that ancient language that is praying out the heart of God. Hallelujah. So we are called the ecclesia. We are called, um, to make changes, to, um, cause laws to change. I believe that. It's when we are praying, when we are the praying church, like we're supposed to be, we're setting tracks for God to work. Amen. Isn't that exciting? I love it that he, he totally trusts us and he has called us. He has called us to be the ecclesia. And he says, you know, we were reading in, in, in Matthew um, on Sunday and we were in Matthew 16 when Jesus asked him, who do you say that I am? And then, uh, of course, Simon Peter replied, you're the, the Christ, the son of God. And then in verse 18, Jesus says, I will build my church. And that word church is ecclesia. It is a governing body. It is a called out special body of people that are called. Yes, it is an honor. It's exciting. So um, we're going to start praying. Are we ready? All right. We're going to start praying. We're going to get an agreement. We're going to cause, we're going to pray out the heart of God, and we're going to cause things to change in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to start by praying for our nation. Amen. Father, we come to you and pray for our nation yes. with mountain-moving faith. Yes. We speak your words yes. and your will for this nation. Yes. We rise up in our authority, Father, yes. in the name of Jesus, and yes. we trample upon serpents and scorpions. We trample with our words. We override and overrun with our prayers. The lies of the enemy are going out against this nation, and we are trampling them with our words right now in the name of Jesus. Our words are winning the war of words in the heavenlies. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Father. You are working mightily in this nation. I thank you, Father. Hallelujah. You are changing laws. You are causing those people that that have the authority to, to change laws to have your mind. Your mind. You're putting people in place and in positions of power to make changes now in the name of Jesus. And those that are speaking lies, their mouths, their tongues are being quieted now. Now, in the name of Jesus, the the media, anybody who is speaking lies, we are saying now that their mouths will be closed in the name of Jesus. Those things will not go out in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. So I want us to agree together and pray in the Holy Ghost. I want us to agree together and pray the, the will of God over our nation. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, hallelujah. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, praise you, the body of of Christ coming together. Yes, Lord. Yes, one body, one body. Thank you, Father. We also pray prayers for our President Donald Trump right now, Father. We ask you, Lord, to continue to give him wisdom and insight into all that he has to accomplish for the good of our nation. We ask you, Lord, and we thank you for removing those men and women who are opposing God's plans right now for this nation and to put into place those who have our nation's best interest at heart. 
In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father. You are surrounding him with men of wisdom, godly wisdom and counsel. We put a, I pray now that you put a guard over President Donald Trump's mouth, that he will only speak what you tell him to speak, Amen. Father, that he will be led by the Holy Spirit, Amen. that you give him your thoughts, Father, that he will not speak out of his own mind and will and emotions, yes. but he will speak out of the Spirit of God, Amen. the Spirit of God. Amen. Oh, Rati, yes, Thank yes. You. Pray with me in the Holy Ghost yes. over our president. Nanda Boshi. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Rambra Tikara. Eh, Ebesheki. Non namasanda la la rabro. Yes, Jesus. End Ebeshi la landa rabro. Korea si. Enkere. Enkere brotora brisaka. No shomonda di rabrita calabor. Rabrisa carabro. Ne shelende de. Ne shelende bere brondo dora brakisha na 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 na. O da bisi on da basha li 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 rabro. Ne selem broti. O rabrasha car rabrondo dora ri brasika ba. Monda basi rabrosoko. Yes, Lord. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing in his life. Yes. Thank you, Father. Yes. Thank you. I know that people are watching from all over this world. They're watching yes. us. They're watching this nation. They're yes. watching our president. They're yes. watching what we will do and how we will react yes. and how we will respond. Yes. Oh, Father, we submit to you. Amen. We surrender ourselves to you. We yield to you, to what yes. you are doing. Oh, thank Amen. you, Father. Amen. And Lord, I, I lift up our community, this our surrounding yes. area around yes. our church right now. We seek and require and request the peace mm. and the welfare of our city, Lord. Yes. You have caused us to live here so that we have authority to pray over it. Yes. So your word declares that when things go well in our city, it will go well with us. Yes. So. Yes. We are praying for this city, yes. and we're 11, praying. Exactly. That's it. It's the blessing. It's the it blessed and the righteous that actually uplift the city. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. So we pray Amen. now for the peace and the welfare of South Fort Worth, Crowley, Burleson, Amen. the surrounding areas. Father, we pray for the spiritual development of the uns those that are unsaved, Lord, yes. that they're going to come to know you. <laughs> they're going to come to know you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. yes. The body of Christ is going to speak out. Yes. I thank you, Father, for these platforms. I thank you, Father, for YouTube. I thank you that we yes. are able to go live on on on. on YouTube, and we're yep. able to be on Instagram and every on Facebook and every Amen. available voice, Father. Amen. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father. Yes. You are causing your word to go out. You are causing your word to go out. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are working in the, in the hearts of, of your children Amen. from the time that they wake up, Lord. Oh, Father, speak to their hearts. Yes. Put people in their minds that they can contact and check yes. on, Father. Their neighbors, Lord, sending out letters, sending Amen. out texts and messages to check Amen. on them, Father. Lord, that we would be in a, a word of encouragement to our city, Father. Amen. Yes, Lord, leading people to you. Lord, Amen. we ask you that you grant the people of our city, Father, truth. That they will have revelation knowledge, Lord. That they will know the truth and yes. it will set them free. Yes. I thank you, Lord, that they'll come to their senses. They're going to escape out of the snare of the devil and this fear amen. that he's trying to keep them captive with. Amen. You know, amen. We're, amen, Pastor. Yeah. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, right? Blessed are the peacemakers, amen. right? For That's they shall us. be called the sons of God. Yeah. They're looking at us. Amen. And when they see that peace in us, and, they, and Lord, when they see that life, yes. that love, that yes. light that comes out of yes. us, Father, they're going to see it. They're going to see a difference. There's light in Goshen, yes. Father. They're going to see a difference. They're going to look at us, and they're going to say, hey, amen. you are a son of the living God. We see the peace of the Father in you. That's we it. see the love of Jesus yes. in you. Oh, yes. hallelujah. Thank yes. you, Jesus. It's our time amen. to shine. Yes, it it's is. Our time yes. Yes, shine. It is. And it I really know is. that and I know that Amen. the thing is right now that Hallelujah. we're supposed to be quarantined. And that kind of sounds like quarantined. It's kind of like put your put your light under oh. that, you know, <laughs> quarantine, like under your bed, hiding out. 
No, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. Oh, we're man. supposed to be shining like never Changing before. Yes, yes. with Hallelujah. our words, with our deeds, with every, I mean, you can't yes. say I love my neighbor and do nothing for your neighbor. Amen. It's time to do something. Amen. This is the perfect time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, thank you, Father. So as we pray in the Holy Ghost, we're praying for our city. We're praying for yes. the surrounding areas, the people. The people, the people, the people, Amen. the people, and praying for the people that know God to stand up and rise Amen. and be who God's called them to be. I agree. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Robrosi la landa da ribrishaka, no socora bra, no socora brisha caradada, lendele broshi, lendele broshi. There's somebody out there going, What will I say? What will I say? And the Father says, If you will just be obedient to open your mouth, I will fill it. I will fill it. I will fill your mouth with what to say, he's saying. <laughs> oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, there is power in the word of God. Yes. You don't have to try to be persuasive. You don't have to try to change Amen. their mind. You don't have to argue with them. Yep. You don't have to do that. Amen. There is power in the word of God. There's power in obedience. Amen. When you honor your father who is telling you to do something and you step out in obedience, Amen. he says, if you open your mouth, I yes. will fill it. Fill it. it all works by love. Hallelujah. There's no need to worry. Amen. It all works by love. It ain't going to be you that's going to do it is going to be the Holy Spirit that's in you. It's going to do the work. So that's exactly Amen. right. Amen. <laughs> right. Hallelujah. Well, if you will pray over the task force that is working to eradicate this yes. coronavirus, yes. there are scientists, our doctors, and all those that are working. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, this coronavirus tries to mutate itself and come back all the time. It's got different levels, different stages, Lord. And so in the name of Jesus, we thank you for pulling the plug yes. on this virus. Okay. We thank you, Father, in the it's name right. of Jesus, for giving the wisdom <laughs> on how to get in there and talk to that yes. DNA, that, yes. what, that transfer RNA, whatever that stuff is, that line of code that's in there, Father. We want that thing eradicated forever. Pull the plug on it in Jesus' name forever so that it can never lift its head again in the name of Jesus. Let it, you know, they, that happened with polio. They were able to make a vaccine for it, Father, that just eradicated it. And, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the same thing. Let's eradicate it, Father. Let's not let that thing ever show its head again in Jesus' name. <laughs> thank you for it, Father. So we thank you for the wisdom that comes from you, Father, the wisdom that comes from you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, man. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. That oh, part man. of prayer is praising yes, is. him for it and thanking him that it's yes, already it done. Oh, Their amen. heads are going to be spinning, aren't they? Oh, man. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Even now, I believe yes. their heads are spinning going, what? How did this happen? Yes. Supernatural. Yes. Thank you, Father. Oh, it's our job. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, health care workers, those that are working with, with those. Father, guys. in the name of Jesus, they're out on the front lines in the name of Jesus. So, Father, I just even now, you know, I, we were talking to, to one of the ladies here on the church. Her name is Tanya. She, she's one of the nurses that work down there. And we just thank you, Father. She was telling us on the wisdom that they're having, how they're organizing things, how they're turning it into uh, uh, mobile units, how they're able to turn that whole hospital with new procedures and new ways, rewriting the book, Father, in the name of Jesus. We just thank you, Father, for that teamwork, for everyone working 
working on the same note, clicking together, functioning together in the name of Jesus, just moving and functioning like a well-oiled machine in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, because, Father, I just thank you for, not only for wisdom for over there on how to deal with this in the name of Jesus, but, Father, I thank you because they've been learning about fear. They've been learning how to walk in peace in the name of Jesus. And I thank you because it's catching like wildfire, Father. That peace of the Lord is coming over them, Father. They don't have to stay away from their families now. They can go home and stay with them because the Lord's going to give them wisdom. He's going to give them that knowledge of his peace. Oh, I just thank you for it, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the police officers also in the name of Jesus, particularly the ones in Fort Worth and in Dallas. Father, we just thank you for the police officers in this area in the name of Jesus. We just come against any more actions that that virus is trying to take on our police force in the name of Jesus. So again, Father, I just thank you for creative ideas, wisdom, witty inventions, witty ideas that come, Father, witty inventions from you, Father, on how to handle things, how to run things. Man, I'm telling you, just a new shift, a new gear. You said, Lord, it's an open door, so I just thank you, Lord, that there's new ways that everybody's functioning, Father, new ways that they're learning. They say, hey, we got it, we got it. This is how we can do it. This is how we can approach it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Ho, tropapara. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory in the name of Jesus. Glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Our prayers are eternal. They are. Our prayers are eternal. There's no distance in the spirit. Hallelujah. right. If you will pray for Dr. Savell and Ms. Carolyn. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the founding father of this church. Thank you for the apostle of this church, Dr. Savell. Father, we just found out there's going to be a virtual uh, victory campaign that's going to happen the second and third and fourth. You can't stop it, devil, in the name of Jesus. Dr. Savella is going to be ministering with Brother Copeland this, this Thursday, Friday. It's going to happen on Saturday. We're going to get words from heaven that move on the earth in the name of Jesus. Father, we're thirsty and we're hungry for you in the name of Jesus. So we're going to tune in, Father. Everybody's going to tune in across the countries, across the nations in the name of Jesus. Think of that, a whole nation together, a whole nation praising your name, a whole nation hearing words from you, Father, that's going to move on the earth. So thank you for their help. Thank you for what you're saying to them right now, Father. Thank you as they're spending time with you right now in the name of Jesus, Father. They're hearing from you. They come in. They're prepared, Father, in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Oh, hallelujah. I thank you for the family, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the finances in the name of Jesus. I thank you for just making everything work according to your plan in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's, let's pray over the Spirit for him. How's that? Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. I mean, think about it, Lord. Think about it. A whole world coming together, a whole world listening at the same time. Everybody from different countries at the same time. Praising your name, Jesus. Praising your name, Jesus. Oh, your name in the heavens. Oh, your name being declared on the earth in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what? Let's pray for the body of Christ here. You know, our body, the heritage of faith in the name of Jesus. And as we were praying, you know, I was reminded of what Jesus said. You know, out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living water. Oh, my goodness. Rivers of living water? Are you kidding me? We're the hose. We're a vessel for you, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for this body of believers. You positioned us in tr strategic positions. You put us in key places. You're advancing us in key places in the name of Jesus. This is 2020, the year of the open door. Supernatural increase being caused over our life as never before. We're thriving, increasing, growing, expanding. We're enlarging, Father. We're prosperous, Father. We're abounding. We're spreading 
ready now. We have steady upward progress. We're at a high point in every area of our life. That means our health. That means our finances, Father, in the name of Jesus. That means our family. It means our calling. It means our workplace in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we are a light for you, Jesus. Rivers of living water coming out of us in the name of Jesus. Oh, man, we abide in you and you abide in us. Your words abide in us and we abide in your words, Jesus. Oh, our joy is full. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father, because just like Pastor Annette said, we are your light. We're not under a bushel at this time in the name of Jesus. No, we're an ecclesia in the name of Jesus. We're an ecclesia. We've been called sons of God. We've been called daughters of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you for this body of beautiful believers. Thank you for them, Father, in the name of Jesus. This church is still functioning. This church is still moving. This church is still growing in the name of Jesus. It's still going out, Father. And what do we do? Why are we here? Because there's hurting people in the name of Jesus. Right, Lord? So how do we do it, Father? How do we do it? We make winners in life, right? We're going out. We're getting experiences with the Lord. We're going out. We're being equipped, and we're engaging the yes, community, yes, Father. Yes. This church, Father, is a house of prayer. It's a house of glory. It's a house of faith, and we got a sphere of influence in the name of Jesus. And Pastor Ned said it. We got something to say. So, Holy Spirit, when we open our mouth, they're going to see your love and your life and your light on the inside of us. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you're just going to be there in the name of Jesus. We're ju- you're just going to be there in the name of Jesus. And as we go out, Father, we're a flood. We are a flood, Jesus. We are a flood. This body is a flood in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, praise you, Father. Okay. We have one more thing that I want us to pray for. Um, And, Pastor Phil, I'd like you to pray for us, to pray for um, Pastor Justin and I and all the pastors. Because these are new waters we're having to (laughs) navigate on how to have church and how to still um, keep connected with with our bodies, um, with the body of Christ. So if you will just pray for us personally, and then if you'll pray for the pastors in in this area. that we'll have the wisdom of God on how to how to navigate these waters, how to do what we're supposed to be doing in these times, having church. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. We do praise you. We thank you, Lord, for uh, our pastors here at this church, Pastor Justin, Pastor Annette. We thank you, Lord, that you're going to keep them sound, spirit, soul, body, and in their domestic needs and life as well. We give you the praise and honor and glory. We thank you for revelation, knowledge, and insight into who we are and what we possess in you. We get the revelation knowledge, Lord, of that in our lives. We thank you for giving them that information to aid and to help and to assist us to get to the determined destination that you've called each one of us to. And so, Father, we also pray for all of the pastors in this area. Lord, that you would touch their lives in a very special way. Lord, that the Holy Spirit of the living God would give them messages in this time to cause increase into the hearts and the lives of those that they have a sphere of influence over. Lord, that they would give them the the good news that Jesus has conquered everything that pertains to life and everything that pertains to godliness. And so we thank you for blessing them and ministering to their each and every need. We pray for the pastors of this house as well, Lord, that you would bless them, Lord, with the increase in knowledge, Lord, of who they are and what they possess in you so that they can pass that information on to us so that we can be further advanced in our relationships with you. And so, Lord, we give you praise now. We give you honor and glory. We commit them all into your care and into your hands, and we thank you that they're blessed from the top of their head, literally to the soles of their feet. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Jesus. Of Paul and Silas. They're thrown in that prison. They're down in that dungeon. It's dark. It's cold. They've been Amen. Up. And what, what does a Christian do? What do you do with Christians, man? They just start praising the That's Lord. It. Oh, they just start praising his name. And the Lord shows up to the party. Amen. Hallelujah. And the chains fall off and Amen. the doors come open and a whole community changes. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, just like Joseph said, just right where you are at home or wherever you're watching, if you're driving, you, you know, please don't stand up. If you're at home right now, stand up and you start praising God. Start, start, start rejoicing. Start yes. praising God right where you are. You may have symptoms in your body, but I'm telling you, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's, there is, there's freedom. Amen. 
where the spirit of God is. There's burden removing, yoke destroying right. power of God. That's right. The presence of God is in this room right now because we, we prayed and where two or three are gathered, there he is in the midst of us. So the presence of God is here. I know the presence of God is right where you are. So stand up, receive your he healing. Stand up and rejoice that God is still on the throne. Stand up and praise God and give him glory in the midst of maybe your depression. Maybe you have a heaviness on you. Maybe you are discouraged, but right now where you are, you start praising God. You start, you start singing the song of victory. How, you start singing a new song over your life right now. Amen. Just right where you are. Just start exalting him and praising him. Father, we glorify you. We praise you. We magnify you. You don't need a worship team to excite you. You don't need a worship team to glorify you. You just need a song of rejoicing. You need a rejoicing heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We rejoice in the Lord and we, again I say rejoice. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And I know Pastor Rick, and when he did the Instagram with the youth, he was talking about changing your atmosphere. He was talking about rejoicing. And I'm telling you, where you rejoice, you can't help but experience the joy of the Lord right where you are. So right where you are, just shake yourself. Amen. And you just encourage yourself in the Lord. And I'm telling you, God is on the throne and you are victorious. You are healed in your body. You're whole in your mind. You're coming up in every area of your life. You are prosperous. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, give him a shout of praise right where you are. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Annette. Thank you, Joseph. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Phil. Hallelujah. God is good. God is faithful. And, uh, you know, uh, don't, don't turn off. We're going we're gonna to get into the Word in just a moment because Wednesday night is about being a house of faith and a house of prayer, a place of glory and a people of influence. And so Wednesday nights is about, about coming, up, coming together and praying to change things, but it's also about the word and growing in faith. So right now we're going to go ahead and give you an opportunity to sow, and you know the different ways to do that, whether you're doing text to give, whether you go to our website, or whether you go to our church app. And, um, and or if you don't, you don't know how to do any of those things, you also can mail it to uh, P.O. Box uh, 748. Crowley, Texas, 76036, and encourage you to, to, to continue to sow, continue to, to, uh, to release your faith and, and believe God. We are, a, we are a sowing church. We're a believing church. We know that, 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 that God is, is one that always multiplies our seed sown. Amen. So you, you know the different ways to give and, 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 you know, and, and you're a faithful church and, and just thank you for your faithfulness. And I'm telling you, God is faithful and he's gonna be, faith, he's gonna be faithful over your finances as you continue to sow in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, the Lord placed something in my heart and, and I'm gonna continue to, to set up this as we transition. So I'm gonna have Pastor Phil to come on up and, and uh, I just had something in my heart tonight and so Pastor Phil and I, are, we're going to share our hearts tonight, and I'm going to have him start off, and because, because I believe that he's placed something in our hearts tonight, and I, I don't know all of what's in his heart. I have an idea, and he has an idea of what's in my heart, and, and, uh, and I believe that, um, that, that, that we're going to be just totally led by the Holy Spirit on exactly what we need to sh share uh, as pastors to encourage your heart. You know, uh, Jesus is the good shepherd. And, but he's also provided shepherds uh, to direct us. And I believe shepherds are meant to navigate us in tough times. And, and I believe you're going to hear the anointing of a shepherd tonight. Amen. As pastors, we are, we are anointed not just to, 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 to teach or to preach, but there's an anointing to pastor and shepherd. And, and so I want Pastor Phil to start off tonight and, and share what God's placed in his heart. So I want you to welcome uh, Pastor Phil as he ministers the word, and then I'll, 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 we'll tag team here in a moment. Amen. Well, well, greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We're, we're glad to be here to be able to share with you and to minister to you. But before we get started with what the Lord's laid on my heart, uh, Dr. Savell last Sunday brought to the congregation a prophecy that the Lord had given to him or a word from the Holy Spirit adding to what has already taken place at the beginning of the year. So I want to read this to you and uh, uh, open up your ears so that you can hear exactly what's being said and you become a participant in this 
and uh, we're, we're going to agree with this word. It says, do not fret and do not fear. I uh, still plan to give you a supernatural year. It's not over and you will not fail. Didn't I tell you that the gates of hell will not prevail? Rest in me and I'll see you through. And I'll bring to pass that uh, all that I said I would do. So thank your Father in heaven that you have a choice. You can, you can choose to fear or you can choose to rejoice. So rejoice and do not cease. This is how you tap into my supernatural peace. Say, that's for me. I receive that. That's for me. Amen. Well, praise God. Thank God that God is still on his throne. Uh, you know, I got to thinking about what would I, what would I share with you? And the, and the Lord kept speaking to me, lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes and look. Have you ever seen any place where God has failed? Can you think of one place that God has failed? You know, God is not surprised about all of this. He knows everything that's going on. And he has made a way for all of us. I mean, you know, Jesus took care of everything that pertains to our natural life and our spiritual life as well. So I'm going to ask you, if you would, please open up your Bibles to Psalm 121. Psalm 121. And I'm going to read the whole chapter to you. It's only eight verses, but every one of them are powerful words that he has to say to us. He said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. Notice where the help comes from. The help is going to come. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Thank God that's not asleep. Did you know he's available 24-7? He's always there. He's a very present help. He is constantly there. He said, Behold, he keepeth uh, Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. Everybody say, That's for me. That's for me. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Notice those first two words. I will. How many of you know you have a choice in this? You can either choose to hook up with what God is doing and what he has promised you. He said, I will. I will make that choice to lift up my eyes and look. I know if we look around us in the natural, we see all these, uh, all the stores closed, uh, uh, things that are going on, people in their homes, uh, sickness that's uh, uh, all around and, and so forth. But the Lord says, look beyond what you see in the natural. How many of you know everything in the natural is subject to change? And if you're going through any type of a, a feeling of sickness or uh, anything like that, despair, uh, disheartened, Whatever, the Lord has the answer for you, but you have to lift up your eyes. You've got to get beyond what you see in the natural and lift up your eyes and look into those hills because that's where your help comes from. You know, when Jesus was praying, many times he would go out in the wilderness, and when he was out in the wilderness praying, lots of times he would just lift up his eyes and look. What was he looking for? He was looking for answers and direction from his Father. Because he only spoke the words that he heard his father speak. He only did the things that his father told him to do. He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the father. He was an imitator of his father. Everything that he did. And we are to be imitators of our Savior. He set the pace and the example for us so that we could look straight on and be encouraged in the things of God. In Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 26 I want to read this to you. You can turn there if you'd like. But it says, Lift up your eyes on high, and behold who hath created these things, that bringeth out, 
uh, their host by number. He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power and not one faileth. Not one faileth. How many of you know you're not a failure? God didn't call you to be a failure. He called you to be a, a conqueror, more than a conqueror. You always triumph in the Lord. You cannot fail because he cannot fail. So we're winners. We're winners in this life. And we will continue to be, regardless of what coronavirus is doing and everything else. It has a name, and it's subject to the name of Jesus. And we take authority over that. We've been taking authority over that. It has to bow its knee. It has to give in because Jesus has paid the price. We are in full covenant with the Lord. His covenant was cut in his blood and the sacrifice that he paid was sufficient for everything that pertains from here on. For eternity, there is nothing that he has not accomplished that he did not accomplish for you and I. So that, that's the reason that we have the right to be able to walk in health. We have the right to walk in peace. We have the right to be victorious in every area of our life. Every time the enemy tries to lay a hand against us in any way or he steals from us in any way and we catch him and you know we always catch him. He always messes up. We catch him and he's got to repay us. But we have to put a demand on him to do so, to loose those things and we receive what he has for us. How many of you remember when Jesus was at, uh, uh, he had gone to the uh, see about Lazarus and we, he knew that Lazarus had died and he had gone to the tomb because he was ready to raise him up. And when he got to the tomb, uh, he said, uh, where is he laid? And they said, he's, he's in this tomb here. And there's a big stone uh, that was over the enclosure of the tomb. And he said, open up the tomb. And the response was, he stinketh by now. <laughs> what does him stinking have anything to do with anything? Jesus was not bound by what the natural things were around him. And he lifted up his voice to heaven, his eyes to heaven, and he said, Lord, I thank you that you hear me always, always when I pray. And then he obviously lent himself to move a little bit closer to the opening of the tomb. And into the tomb, he said with a, elevated voice, he said, Lazarus, come forth. Well, you know why he had to do that, don't you? Because Lazarus had already left and gone into Abraham's bosom. And he called him back into his body. And the Bible says, and Lazarus came to the front of the tomb. Now, Lazarus was bound with grave clothes. How did he get to the front of the tomb? I believe the Holy Ghost just floated him right up to the front of the tomb. And the first command that Jesus gave to the ones that were there, that I'm sure were shocked with what had happened, he said, loose him and let him go. Lazarus came forth. You and I, we need to lift up our eyes and look. Listen, coronavirus doesn't have anything on our God. Absolutely nothing. It has no place in our body. It has no place in our thinking. We should not be bound by the things that, that is going on right now. I, I know that people are rushed. They've rushed into stores. They've kind of calmed down a little bit now. That's because they've hoarded it all up. <laughs> and that's the truth. Because people are afraid. They're, they're uncertain. They're not sure. But listen, we are sure. Yeah. We are, we're not of this world. We're in it, but we're not of it. We are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. How many of you know we have a different DNA? Once you become a born-again believer, you have a different DNA. You belong to the Lord. Amen. You've got righteousness flowing through your veins. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21, it says, For he became sin. For he made him to be sin who knew no sin. Jesus was not a sinner. He didn't need to repent and get his life right. Jesus 
was sin. He became sin. Everything that sin was from the garden up until that day, Jesus became it so that you and I could become the righteousness of God in him, in right standing with him as if we had never sinned. We belong to God. You belong to God. Listen, church, don't fret. Don't get in despair. Don't get caught up in all of the nonsense that's going on. You have hope in God. Put your hope in your Redeemer. Put your hope in what he sacrificed that great sacrifice for. He did not do that in vain. He did that so that the world, literally, legally, this whole earth is saved. It's just that they have to accept it. It's a choice. You choose. You choose the direction of life that you want to go. Can you say amen? And how many of you know you have to change your mindset? You have to change the way you think. And that's the reason we need to be in the Word. He'll hasten to the Word to perform it. So we need to have the Word. This church is not lacking for the Word. We get the Word. But the question is, is am I getting it? Am I getting it? Am I really letting it reside and to sink into my heart? Am I doing what it says in Romans 10 and 17? Now faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. Repetition is your greatest teacher. Read it over and over and over and over. Meditate on it. Speak it out. Call it into existence. Look at yourself in the mirror. I don't know how many of you look at yourself in the mirror. Occasionally, I'll, you know, I'll stop for just a minute and I'll look at myself and I'll say, you know what, you're something else. <laughs> and it's not because of me, it's because of the greater one that indwells me. I became something different whenever I became a Christian in Christ Jesus, got filled with the Holy Ghost and received all of his characteristics into my life. His love, his peace, his joy, his temperance, meekness, and long-suffering, and gentleness, and kindness, and faithfulness have become a quality part of my life. And I must develop those. You've all seen a brand new baby that comes into the world. They have the same muscles that you, as you and I, but they just haven't exercised them yet. They have to learn how to do these different things. And we help them, and we teach them. And we're patient with them, aren't we? We're patient with our children. At least we should be. We need to be patient with one another because someone hasn't arrived at a certain level and everything else, they go to the doctors. Listen, some of us wouldn't be here if you didn't have a doctor. You know, faith is not, I don't believe that there's circumstances and situations that happen in life. We're not denying the fact that sickness doesn't exist. It does exist. The thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. That's his job. That's what he's doing. He's doing everything he can do to make you miserable in life. If he can look, get you looking at the circumstances that we're uh, presently in right now, even though we've been declared we've got to go another 30 days, per se, into this situation. How many of you know God in a moment, in an instant, in a micro minute of, of a second can take this whole thing and stop it, but he has to have a people that he has that will be willing to pay the price and pray the price to see it come to pass. You know, someone asked me, when, you know, God's not doing anything else. He's done everything he needs to do. He has put the responsibility now on your shoulder and my shoulder. I've got to lift up my eyes. I have to make a choice to lift up my eyes and look into my source of supply. He is my source in every endeavor of my life. Spirit, soul, body, and domestic. And he should be yours too. We are called by his name. What a precious name we have in our life. What a precious person we have to guide our life. The Holy Spirit is a person. He's not a thing. He's not an it. He's a person. And he's come to lead us and to guide us and to reveal to us everything that we have need of in our lives. Can you say amen? But I have to make a choice. I have to renew myself to the way he thinks. Philippians 2.5 says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. It's a decision that you make. It's a decision that I make. Church, we have been given all of the tools. 
everything that's necessary. If you're a brand new babe in Christ, you're a whole lot further along than you probably even realize. If you've been sitting underneath this ministry any length of time, you've got more in you than you ever even really realize you've got. You can't sit underneath this, underneath this word and just not uh, go anywhere. It's, it's, it's too, there's too much of a demand on us to step up into the venues that God's called us to. Thank God we've got pastors that tell us and help us to step up, giving us fresh insight and revelation into who he is and what we possess in him. Then in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 21, it says, for where your treasure is, where your treasure is, where is your treasure tonight? In who do you trust? In whom have you believed? What is it that you are expecting out of the Lord? What are you anticipating? What are you believing God for? Are you believing for a healing? Are you believing for deliverance? If he can set one free, he can set you free. If he can heal one, he can heal the other. You're not exempt from his love and his mercy. God is a God of love. Everything that God operates in is love. Faith worketh by love. That's, that's our motive for why we operate in faith. Faith is, is, is not a movement. It's not a religion. It's a way of life. The just shall live by faith. Putting confidence and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and everything that he accomplished for us and our Heavenly Father and the Holy Spirit who is daily guiding us. He is a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. He's always present to aid, to assist, and to help you. And he'll help you through all of this. Whatever needs that you might have, he's going to help you through it. One last verse of scripture I want to give to you. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. He said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these other things will be added unto you. How many of you know all of the things aren't important? At least not as important as our relationship with him. If we'll get this right and keep it right, then all of this will work out just fine. He has opened a brand new door for you and I to walk through, to go and to enjoy all of the privileges and the benefits that God has. A great harvest is in store for you because God has made a way where there seems to be no way. The enemy has brought something on the earth, but God's word will never cease to override what the enemy has set out to do. Well, I want to bless you and thank you for listening and sharing with us. And we're going to have pastor come up and finish this out. God bless you now. You know, everything that you're, what you're seeking and what you're looking at is the direction that you're heading in life. You know, he just said, seeking first the kingdom of God and all these other things will be added unto you. You know, thinking about the Apostle Paul and he was talking to the church in, in Philippi and, you know, he was in prison at the time, but yet he understood all the different tacks they were facing. We don't know all that they were facing during that time, but we know they were facing some extreme situations because that's why he came to them and, and encouraged them and was telling them that what I began in you, I will complete in you. He was talking to them about the same mind as new will be also, same mind that's in Christ will be also will be in you. He, he talked about in, in Philippians, he talked about pressing on to the mark, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth to those things that are before. So the apostle Paul was encouraging the Philippian church, just as we're encouraging you tonight. And in Philippians chapter four, verse one, he makes a statement. He says, therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and long for my joy and crown, then he says, so stand fast in the Lord. You know, and I hear that's what the, even what Pastor Phil was talking about. He was talking about what are you seeking after? He was talking about what are you looking to, about looking up. Apostle Paul was saying, stand fast in, that, in the Lord. The word stand fast here means to be immovable. It means to be persistent. It means to be strong. It means to be steady. It means to be firm. 
And it also means, also refers to in your relationship with God. So what is the Apostle Paul telling them? He's saying, my brethren, I love you. I care for you. I long for you. You're my joy and you're my crown, meaning, meaning you are a project, uh, you, are, you, are a, uh, you are a product of, uh, of my, my preaching the gospel. You're, you're a product and my heart is after you. And what does he tell them? Then the very next statement he says, he tells them what? So stand fast in the Lord. See, we, we, if we just brush over that as just, just a, a simple statement, then we can lose the power of it. But what was he saying to them? Stay firm in your relationship with God. Don't be moved from your relationship with God, but stay steady in him, steady pursuing him, steady seeking after him, steady looking after him. I'm telling you, there is a product of your pursuit. There is, I'm telling you, there is, a, there is something, there is, there is a product of your pursuit. And I came across this today in, in 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 15, because it has to do with seeking first the kingdom of God. Now here, we're, we have to understand reading this that we live under a new covenant today. Praise God for that. But there's something we, I want you to see here and it has to do with seeking God. In verse, thir- actually verse 13, it says, and that whoever would not seek the, actually verse 12 says, and they entered into covenant to seek the Lord. Make a covenant to seek the Lord. Make a decision to seek the Lord. It's a choice to keep covenant. Now, remember, as I read this next statement, remember, we live under a new covenant, okay? The next verse says, and that whoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel would be put to death, whether young or old, man or woman, In verse 14, it says, they took an oath to the Lord with a loud voice, with shouting, with trumpets and with cornets. What was, what did they say? What was their covenant? And all Judah rejoiced in the oath for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him, yearning for him with their whole desire. And he was found by them. Now get this. And the Lord gave them rest and peace round about. I'm telling you, on the other side of what you're seeking is rest and peace all about, is round about you. Rest and peace. Look to him. Seek after him. Stand fast in the Lord. In the whole rest of this next, rest of this chapter, the Apostle Paul is communicating to us about peace. Communicating to us about joy. For the sake of time, verse four says in in Philippians chapter four says, verse four says, rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. Verse five says, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. The word moderation isn't the way we look at it. It's just everything in moderation. That's not, that's not what it's talking about here. It's, It's not just talking about just, if I just do a little bit of this and a little bit of that and there's balance, this scripture is not about balance. This scripture is about your attitude. This scripture about is your, your, about, about your pursuit. It's about what you're continuing in. It's about your attitude and your pursuit. It's about your uh, moral excellence. It's about how you're staying stable. So what is he saying? Let your attitude be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Meaning let people see how you're living. Let people see how you're pursuing God. Let them see why. Because Jesus is coming back. He's coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. So let your moderation, your way of life be seen by all men. And then he says what? What what, way? Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. What is, what is prayer and thanksgiving? It's seeking God. It's seeking first the kingdom of God. What's prayer and thanksgiving? It's standing firm. It's standing fast in the Lord. It says, let your requests made known unto God. And what? The peace of God. You see, the product of your pursuit is peace. Let the peace of God pass all, all understanding. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. I'm telling you, if, if all of a sudden I didn't have, if I didn't have a dollar bill or if I didn't have money, you know, if I don't have money, then I'm missing something that I need. But all of a sudden, if, if, if that money was get placed in my hand to meet a need, you know what, then I, I, that, then I have peace in that area. 
I had peace where I didn't have peace before. So when, when, when all of a sudden, when I have the, the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep my heart and mind. See, it's the peace that's going to keep your heart and mind. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Don't be anxious, but seek him first. You see, what you're seeking, when you're seeking him, I'm telling you, the product is peace. Don't say, well, I'm, you know, I, well, you know, it just hasn't come, come to pass yet, pastor. You know, I, I'm not healed yet. It hasn't come to pass. Well, you know, my, my, my need hasn't been met yet. See, that, that don't count on that to be your peace. See, let the product of your seeking first be peace. And then he goes on and tells us, why? Because you're, you're going you're gonna to be tossed to and fro. You're going to be all over the place. But what, is it, what does the apostle Paul tell them? He tells them, think on things. Think on things, right? Think whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things, things are sever of just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, if they be any praise, praise, think on these things. Think on these things. I mean, think on the things that are gonna bring peace. Think on the things that are, don't think, don't think on what it looks like right now, don't, but think on the good report. I, my, my, that, look on the report of the Lord. Don't look at the facts, look at the truth. Think on things that are honest. Think on things that are honorable. Think on things that, that are just. What's just? Jesus is just. Jesus is righteous. Jesus is, think on what he did at the cross. What Jesus did at the cross is righteousness personified. Think on those things. Think on things that are pure. Jesus was pure. Hallelujah. He was holy. He was, think on those things. If there be any virtue, be if there are praise, think on these things. Hallelujah. What you're thinking on is what you're seeking. I'm telling you, what you're seeking is, is going to be what's going to produce whether you have peace or you don't have peace. Thank you, Father. You know, it has to do with your thoughts. What are you seeking? It has to do with your thoughts. The Apostle Paul, I believe he gave us a firsthand experience in this chapter. Because he, he, he didn't tell us, you know, you know I've, I don't have any problems now that I'm born again. Actually, the contrary here. In verse 11, actually verse 10, he says, but I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again, wherein you were also careful and you lacked opportunity. He goes, not that I speak in respect of want, that's verse 11, for I have learned in whatever state I am therewith to be content. Meaning it doesn't matter what state I'm in, I'm going to be the same. I'm going to stand fast in the Lord. It doesn't matter. And then he tells us what? I know both how to abase and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things. I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I love what the Amplified says here in verse, uh, verse 12. He says, not that I'm implying that I was any pers- personal want, for I've learned how to be content, satisfied to the point where I'm not disturbed or disquiet, disquieted in whatever state I'm in. I'm not disturbed. I'm not moved in whatever state I'm in. I know how to abase and live humbly in straightened circumstances. I know so how to enjoy plenty and live in abundance. I have learned in any and all circumstances the secret of facing every situation, whether well-fed or going hungry, having a sufficiency and enough to spare, or going without and being in want. Meaning his pursuit was always the same, whether he had a lot or he had nothing. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So it it shouldn't matter to us right now what we're seeking and where we're finding our peace. Because the apostle Paul, he said, what was, what was, how, how could he 
Where did he find this satisfaction? In verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amplified says, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I'm ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I'm self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. You see, when you're seeking him and you're putting him first, you're allowing him to work in you. I can, Paul's saying, I can do all things. Why does Paul seek him? Why? Because I can do all things through Christ, through Christ who strengthens me. I'm telling you, you're no different. Stand fast in that relationship. Look up like, the, like Pastor Phil talked about. Seek first like Pastor Phil talked about. Recognize that God is still on the throne. Recognize that he is the all-powerful creator. Recognize that he is, the, he is El Yelyan. He is the most high God. Recognize and know that he is Jehovah. Recognize that he is the Christ. He is the anointed one. And he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And recognize that when you seek him, when you rest in him, you can do all things. You can make it through all things. That you're empowered in all things. Hallelujah. Let me close with this. When Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, that word strengthen me, strengthen me means to be enabled and it means to be empowered. It also means a position. And let's close with this thought. It's a position. And it is a fixed position of power. Now get this. When Paul said, I can do all things through Christ, through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who puts me in a fixed position of power. I'm telling you, when you seek him, when you're standing fast in him, you are in a position of power. And you can do all things. Not in you. This has nothing to do with what you can do. This has nothing to do with how many scriptures you can quote. Has nothing to do with how, how, much you, how many hours you can pray. It has everything to do. Can you rest in him? Because as I'm telling you, as you seek him, you are putting yourself in a fixed position of power. I'm telling you, that position is a position of peace. Hallelujah. We speak peace over you tonight. We speak the strength of God over you tonight. We declare that you are above only and you're not beneath. We declare that you're blessed coming in and you're blessed going out. We declare that Christ is working in you and he's working in you mightily. And you're experiencing the peace of God in a way that you've never experienced it before. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I just want to ask any of our executive team that might be here if there's anything that is in their heart that they believe that they want to share with, a, with, a, with those that are watching and uh, as a matter of encouragement, I just to put you on the spot, but I just want to just open that up to you if there's anything that you, each one, any of you have. Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, we, on the other side of this thing, you're going to be greater than you were before it. And, and you don't have to, well, how's that going to be? It's not up for us to figure that out. Just think, nine months of Job's life, at the end, he was twice as time, two times better. Think about it. Think about it. All the things that he experienced in that nine-month period of time, and yet he was greater than before. And, and before, it said he was the richest man in the East. So expand your faith. Expand your thinking. 
But it's all based in, it's all based in, in this relationship Amen. that the Apostle Paul said, stand fast in the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, I just stretch my hand towards those watching tonight and I speak life over them. I speak encouragement over them. I declare if there's any darkness that's overshadowed them, hopelessness that's overshadowed them, shadowing them. I thank you as they look up right now, as they look to you, as they look to the Lord. I thank you, Father. As they seek the Lord, as Chronicles said, it said that they would, they'd experience rest and peace round about. And I thank you as they go throughout the rest of this week and as they just take a moment to look up or as they take a moment to get in the word and seek the Lord, I believe and declare that they will experience rest and peace round about. And we thank you for this tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you. We believe in you. Make sure you, you email us your, your testimonies and things that God is doing in your life. You can email those at testimonies at hairjafade.com. Also, make sure you, you post pictures on Facebook or and Instagram and, uh, and, and, and tag the church in them. We want to see you. We miss your faces. We miss your smiling hearts. We, uh, we miss, our, we miss uh, our, our parking lot team, you know, that's waving people in on, on Sunday mornings. We miss um, each one of you. We, we miss your amens and, and, and know, just but know that we're praying for you yes. and we're believing that the best is yet to come and this is turning quickly. Amen. We love you. God bless. Have a great, great rest of the week and we'll see you live online at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning or whenever you have the ability to watch it on Sunday morning. God bless. Love you. See you soon.